the whole thing. While we trying to do this. Okay, now that we got the dot, uh, the channel, the constant over here, I'm actually going ahead and remove all these guys because I don't want to actually visualize them. So I'm actually going ahead and say edit parameter interface, and I'm gonna go ahead and select all these guys except the first two being the name and the value that you got over here and say apply. And uh oh, oh, actually I'm gonna select all those guys and actually say invisible. Okay, then I click apply so that hides all of them. But this value is actually kind of stuck over here to the side. I want to make it longer pretty much to fit in over here. So I'm going to go ahead and do is actually pick up anything over here. I'm going to just pick up an integer or a float. Doesn't matter. Then I'll drop right in the middle in between both of them. But I'm going to make it actually invisible. Then press apply. So actually now that pushes down the value to a longer range pretty much the way I would like it. And that's just something I thought is necessary for me. But here comes the most uh, you love this. I actually I've said this before I think, but you're gonna love this guy. So in the shape you got this guy called lookup. And uh, pretty much it scales everything between a range of zero to a hundred or zero to one, depending on how you wanna put it. So pretty much it takes in our case the animation which is actually baked into chops as of right now, it's all baked into chops. So you're looking at all the channels, po uh, position channels from the rigid bodies baked into chops. So pretty much now you have total control over them what you're gonna be doing with the geometry is actually get the data and using this as the lookup you can actually go from 0 to 100 or 0 to 1 depending on what kind of range you want to use using this to check on this using the lookup chop it doesn't make any sense don't worry so first thing you're gonna plug in is the index to the constant all right, that's the index, and then this right here is the object lookup table. So what you want to look up is the geometry over here. Now, if you click on this, you are literally on one right now at the very end of the animation. Now, if you actually go take it down to zero, you're at the very beginning of the animation. If you take it to 0 0.5, 8, 0 0.5, you're midway through the animation. Does it make any sense? I can animate this. To a very fast speed to right there then make it stop while the camera is still going around and when i would like the position where the camera is i can actually make it go fast and go to the very end of the simulation and pretty much that's the technique you're going to be using so utility null something like that and i'm, I'm gonna go ahead and actually pop up the with this being at zero I'm gonna go ahead pop up the render view over here and you know this was actually simulating before this so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually play and it does actually simulate as you expected All right so this is pretty much what we send out to chops now I'm gonna go ahead back here over here and say sourcing and the sourcing we're gonna drop in a channel and pretty much the default that you got over here will work because what we, what we took out was uh, the position data which has three channels which is uh, T, X, T, Y, T, Z but it was animated in our case and what you want to go ahead and look at is the code is weird which we which just uh, took out as of right now and say accept and we're going to visualize this guy now if I do play nothing actually moves somebody tell me why Because the constant over here is actually now what's controlling the animation. Now I'm gonna take my frame back to very fast frame, and actually now I'm gonna go up to the parameter editor for the constant, and I'm actually go ahead and move this. And look at thing, at, looking at the screen, I can go back, I can go forward. All right. So pretty much. I'm done with the tutorial as of right now. So you got your objects actually moving. Now I'm gonna go back to the parameter editor. I'm not on the timeline. I'm on the parameter editor over here. I'm gonna move this a little bit. And oh, 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 they started to drop. I wanna rewind that. <laughs> so pretty much that's the animation. I'm pretty much done with the tutorial right now. What you need to do now is actually animate this. So. 
I'm actually go ahead and create a camera so I'm gonna go back to scene level and I'm gonna go to render and create a camera and depending on what you want to do you might want to you know put it to a HD 10 20 12 80 by something and visualize the, the new camera and you might want to name it something So all you need to do now is actually go ahead over here to the chops and with the constant just animate this pretty much. And that's all you need to do to actually get the animation exactly the way you want. I'm going to go ahead and set up my keyframes then I'm going to be right back probably with a decent enough animation and I'm pretty much done for the tutorial. That's how you would actually go ahead and do the bullet time effect and I'm done and by the way this is not limited to dynamics if you got a character running if you got a building falling if you got buildings blowing if you got a fire blowing pff, limitations is basically your mind and I'm out I'm gonna do a quick animation and I'm done for the day okay so I got my cheesy camera set up set up so I just got the camera and uh, added an arrow and um, I'm gonna go ahead and say that if you get the you know blocky uh, corners in the translation and pretty stuff like that you want to go ahead and play with this you don't want you know you want smooth transitions pretty much so I'm gonna go ahead and play with this part over here play with the curvatures and make sure that uh, you're getting the flow that you'd actually like and you don't have the blocky blocky stuff you see like here it actually means it goes up and down that's why you get the little bump effect when you see the camera moving as of right now uh, when I simulate this so I'm gonna go ahead and play this and pretty much that's the effect as it is it stops in me there and goes around and I'm not a good animator, I won't even lie, but that's pretty much the effect. I like it. <laughs> oh, and I'm pretty much done for this tutorial. So I'm actually go ahead and um show you this really quick. I'm gonna go to the dot chop net over here and I'm actually gonna press the shift key and you can actually see how I keyframe the keyframe the time so that it actually stops. Okay, so right now if I s just scrub on the tunnel edit over here, you can see how the keyframes actually go from a lower value to a higher value over here. So that's when it starts simulating and when it's right there, it's, it's on a zero value as you can see. Zero. And once it starts going up, that's when it explodes and pretty much right there it's on a constant value. So it pretty much stays the same as you see, it stays the same constant. Then once she goes up to there, it starts animating again and goes up. So pretty much you can see how that's done. Using the constant chop, uh, the lookup chop, and the geometry chop. Pretty much three nodes and you get the effect in a snap. And I'm out on this one, so thank you. See you on the next one. Big up to everybody that's doing this thing. See you on the next one. Out.